Hi everyone, this is chapter 2, AI Developer Workflows and Bringing Up the Qualcomm Robotics RB5 Development Kit. In chapter 1, we spoke to Kishore, who leads the pro uh, product development for enabling uh, robotics use cases within Qualcomm. We talked a little bit about what AI developers would need uh, to consider as they are venturing into building their robotics use cases. Today, I have Ramya with me. Hi, Ramya. Hey, Rajan. Hi, everyone. I'm an applications engineer with Qualcomm, and I'm part of the Qualcomm Developer Network team. I work very closely with the robotics team in evaluating the out-of-the-box experience for developers. Thanks, Ramya. Thank you, Rajan. So as Ramya said, in this chapter, we'll be taking a look at the AI developer workflow, and we'll be doing a little bit of unboxing on the Qualcomm Robotics RB5 development kit. Ramya will help us with that. We'll talk a little bit about what uh, uh, Linux embedded uh, operating systems are available on these platforms, how uh, they can be used, and then we'll do some board bring up on the robotics dev kit. So to jump into the AI developer workflow, right? So regardless of what type of developer you are, uh, whether it's robotics developer or you come coming from an AI uh, uh, use case standpoint, when you start your AI development workflow, you start with selecting a deep learning framework. Right, these can be your TensorFlow, Cafe, uh, ResNet, MobileNet SSD, PyTorch. You would you would first uh, select a framework of choice depending on your use case. Then you would select a data set and then you would train your model uh, using that data set and that framework. Right, that's the part where an ML training engineer would, would actually uh, then train your model uh, on, on the data set. Once you have your model performing to uh, a point where it's satisfactory for your use case, uh, then you would then uh, take that model and deploy it on the target device. Uh, this is where uh, for Qualcomm target devices, we provide some SDKs that will help you optimize your models to run on the target device. Uh, we have something called the Qualcomm Neural Processing SDK that basically takes your framework, uh, it, it takes the model that you trained in your framework and it converts it, it into a uh, a DLC file, a deep learning container file, that the run runtime will then execute on on the target platform. So it's optimized for for running on a dedicated AI uh, processor. That way, it's a lot more power and performance optimized. Uh, for a, a typical app developer, would then take the DLC file that's converted using the Qualcomm tools and integrate that into an app, and uh, the runtime will then use the DLC file to run on the target device. Let us unbox the Qualcomm Robotics RB5 Development Kit. Out of the box, the dev kit comes with a setup guide, power adapter, USB-C cable, and speakers. The dev kit consists of the QRB5165 SOM, navigation mezzanine, main camera, and a tracking camera. Once you are in the RB5 page, scroll down and click on the SDK manager and download. Unzip the downloaded file. It consists of Docker files for different host PCs, an installation package, and a README file. The README file has instructions on how to create Docker containers, install SDK manager, and generate system images for different host PCs. For this session, we will be using Docker on Windows host PC. To install SDK Manager on Ubuntu 18.04 Docker Container on Windows Host PC, please follow the instructions in the README document. In the Windows PowerShell, you can see the Ubuntu 18.04 Docker image and container listed. Start the Docker container and run the docker exec command to start the SDK manager.
once the SDK manager is up and running, enter your Thundercom account credentials. In this video, I am generating an LU 1.0 image for RB5, but we recommend you use the latest version LU 2.0 based on the Linux kernel 5.x. The SDK manager lists multiple versions of the system image. You can select one of the versions and type in help and enter one to start generating the system image. This process takes about 40 minutes. The generated system image is in the root directory as you see here. Exit from the docker container and move the system image zip file to windows host PC using the docker cp command. Now on the windows host unzip the system image. Next, we will proceed to flashing RB5 with the generated system image. We need to download the multi-DL tool from Thundercom website to flash the system image onto RB5. Go to RB5 page on Thundercom Click on SDK Manager, scroll all the way down where the Multi-DL tool is mentioned and click on the link. In the new page, scroll down to the Tools section and download the Multi-DL tool and unzip it. From the MultiDL folder, run the MultiDL tool executable. Click OK. In the MultiDL window, go to Options and select Configuration. Enter the password as 123456 and click OK. Select Flat Build and UFS as the flash type. In the image path, navigate to the system image folder and select UFS folder in full build. The programmer file is selected by default. Click on load XML and select all raw programs and patch files and click OK. At this point, Set the RB5 to EDL mode. Press and hold down the EDL button. Insert the power cable and USB-C cable and release the EDL button. You'll see the status as ready in the MultiDL tool once RB5 is in the EDL mode. Click on Start to begin the flash process. Once the flash process is complete, you'll see that the status is set to Pass. RB5 starts booting up 
and you should be able to see the LED turn on. Once you have the system image flashed on RB5, let's see how to bring up the HDMI display. You can use an HDMI monitor as display for RB5, but in this video, I used an HDMI to USB capture stick and the camera application on the Windows host PC as the HDMI output for RB5. Connect RB5 with a keyboard and mouse. and an HDMI to USB capture stick between RB5 and Windows host PC. On the host PC, open the camera application and click on the camera flip icon to select the HDMI output from RB5. Power up the RB5, wait for the prompt to come up. Enter the login as root and password as OE Linux123. You are now in RB5 shell. To get the Western desktop running, enter the commands as you see here. You now have the Western desktop up and running. You can open the Western Terminal from the top left corner as shown here. Wait for the prompt to come up and you are ready to build applications on RB5. Let us see how to set up Wi-Fi on RB5. Once you have the Western Desktop up and running, open the Western Terminal and edit the WPA supplicant file. Put in the SSID and PSK of your network and save the file. Now reboot the RB5. Log into the RB5 and launch the Western desktop again. Go to the Western Terminal and use the ping command to check if data packets are being returned. It seems that we have success. Now that you are connected to the Wi-Fi, you can get started with the sample apps we have on the GitHub repository. Thanks, Ramya. Thanks for walking us through unboxing the kit and uh, bring, bringing up the port and connecting to HDMI and some basic stuff like, like Wi-Fi. Uh, this is the end of chapter two. In the next chapter, we'll take a look at the Qualcomm Intelligent Multimedia Framework or GST plugins and how developers can really use uh, the GST plugins to build a camera pipeline, uh, do some AI on it uh, and visualize the output uh, on this development kit. Uh, thank you, stay tuned.